All right, let's get this show on the road. Hopefully there's some sound coming over out there. Uh, this is Doc Mike, the Redneck Dentist on Real Liberty Media. Got a lot of, to talk about this week, and I'm pretty excited. This is a great week. We're having the uh, you know, March Madness going on. That's always fun to watch, even though <clears throat> my bracket was totally destroyed. When Ohio State lost yesterday, it was kind of funny because I don't even like Ohio State, but I thought they'd go a little further than they did. Um, so anyway, it's always fun when <laughs> it's always fun when your bracket is destroyed right off the bat. Uh, it makes it kind of interesting to watch the rest of the tournament, see how it plays out. A lot of surprises in there, and of course we got NASCAR going on today, uh, truck series and. Um, the Xfinity race is coming right up. That should be pretty cool. Uh, kind of surprising, like right before, well, an hour before I came on, that we have riots breaking out all over the world, everywhere except here in the United States, the only country that has a Bill of Rights and a Constitution that protects our, you know, right to bear arms, free gives us freedom of spree of speech freedom of assembly and yet here we are like a bunch of damn sheep just letting the government do to us what they will i'm impressed to see you know germany france uh other countries <laughs> rioting against uh the covid lockdown and let's see let's see why uh let's see who who else doing it let's see uh germany Switzerland, London, France, yeah, they're all rioting against uh, the COVID lockdown. Now, after last week, I went and checked the CDC numbers, although, you know, you can only trust government data for, well, as much as you dare to trust it. I pulled the numbers directly off the CDC website, and uh, because I wanted to see for myself, you know, what the effect of the COVID virus has been. So it turns out that um, the percent of the population that's been infected with COVID-19 in the United States is about 8.7%. That was um, 29 million out of an estimated 300 and 32 million people in the United States. So I did the math myself. You can all check it if you want. It's about 8.7%. The percent of people who have died of COVID, and those numbers you know are exaggerated, but even with the exaggeration, uh, as of March 13th, last Saturday, we had 526,000 deaths. And again, if you divide that number by the population of the United States and then multiply by 100, you get the percentage. It's 0.16% of people in the United States have actually died from COVID. And um, about 1.8% of people who get infected die. So here we are, you know, there's a lot of, I know, a lot of uh, people concerned about getting the vaccine or even being in lockdown, and thank God other countries are, you know, rioting instead of us, because, of course, if we did it, we would be um, chastised, I'm sure, not only by our own government, but who knows who else. But I'm glad to see that it's starting somewhere else. Actually, I'm embarrassed to see that it's starting somewhere else. It mu would be much better if we were the ones to do it. You know, I've been calling for us to claim our independence on 4th of July, and heck, that, uh, <laughs> now, you know, that was pretty short-sighted. I think I should have kind of encouraged us all to get on the bandwagon like right now, but um, we'll see if we even do it. I think, you know, so many people here in the United States are asleep. I had a, came to this uh, idea, the uh, title of the show today, one of my subjects is um, woke versus eyes wide open 
And I hope that, uh, and one reason why I love being on Real Liberty Media and listening to the other shows here on Real Liberty Media is because you get a very different perspective than what you get when you listen to mainstream media or legacy media. Um, people really are good thinkers <laughs> on this uh, platform have really good ideas and, and can give you the ability to think for yourself. And I think that's really important. You know, I do have grandkids. I don't know, about 10 of them. I, I didn't count before I came on, but it's a bunch. And um, four of them I see pretty much daily because they live nearby. And, you know, they're between ages 2 and 10. And, you know, with the COVID thing going on, um they are, you know, basically doing their schoolwork at home or here. And, you know, they get you get so much pushback about doing schoolwork. And I always tell them, you know, it's important for you to learn to think. Really, the subject matter isn't that important, although I don't like the brainwashing they get with the progressive agenda constantly shoved down their throats and everything basically from the shows they watch to the subject matter they're taught. Uh, it's, you know, you got to constantly defend against that. So, um, you know, I tell them, I, I just tell them, listen, it's important that you learn how to think. And I have a kind of a great example. I might have told this story already, maybe in the first episode or something. But the 10-year-old, who I think just turned 11 uh, yesterday. Oh, today actually is his birthday. We celebrated his birthday yesterday because he's going to the other parent's house. But anyway, um, he, so the other granddad w said he would pay him uh, $5 an hour to help him do some deconstruction in a house. Well, actually, their house, take out some walls and sheetrock. I don't know, so some deconstruction, right? And I said, okay, well, how much money did you get? And he goes, he says, I get $20 a day. I go, for how many hours? And he said, eight. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, you might want to learn to do your multi multiplication tables. And I said, I want you to go this week and I want you to study your times tables and I want you to especially study your eight times tables for the number eight and when he came back the next week I said okay so I said did you study your times tables for the number eight and he said yeah I did and I said okay so what's eight times five and he said it's 40 and I go yeah I go it's 40 I go, and how much do you get paid a day for working with your grandpa? And he said, 20 bucks. And I go, I know. And how much money are you supposed to be getting paid an hour? And he said, $5. I go, yeah, I think you better figure out the math on that one and go collect some of the money you're owed. But I told him, I go, listen, I go, if you're not smart enough, you know, to figure that kind of stuff out. Yeah, you're going to, you're going to, people are going to, you know, people will take advantage of you if you can't think for yourself. So that's what I try and do is just encourage them to be able to think and solve problems and, and critically think about things. And uh, I hope, I hope that I have some effect on them o over, you know, over their entire lives, but you never know. You never know how that goes, right? I mean, I'm so proud of our daughter, Crystal. She's awesome. And um, But you know, when you're parents growing up, sometimes you look at your kids and you just think, man, I, I don't know how you're ever going to make it. You know, I, I, you have, you know, you worry that they're going to do something really stupid or just throw their lives away or whatever. And man, she has just turned out to be so incredibly awesome that it kind of makes you forget about all this stuff you went through before she got to where she is. But 
Um, but that that was pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> there's a note in the chat. No kidding. I should take half his pay uh, if he collects it. But at least he's a little smarter about that now. All right. I wanted to, uh, I don't know, so the kind of surprising thing was is seeing these riots. And, you know, that actually, I got that note from Real Liberty Media. So uh, if you're listening to this podcast or listening to the show live, be sure and mark these other shows and follow Real Liberty Media. And you'll be able to get those kind of, uh, those kind of tips also. I think that came in a tweet, by the way. So thank you for that. Uh Anyway, so I went over the numbers with you a little bit just to give you an idea. Like this whole COVID thing has been a joke from the beginning. And I was actually kind of thinking about this. You know, public health, public health, uh, whatever you want to call it, public health service, public health uh, philosophy is that you, you create the most benefit for the greatest number of people but that doesn't mean that everybody needs to be punished you know this is so simple to me and i don't know why the entire world got on this bandwagon because you would think with all the different public health officers or departments in all of these different governments that at least one of them would have said, look, we don't need to lock everybody down. What we need to do is offer information that will allow people to make the best decisions for themselves. You know, tell people, look, if you have underlying health conditions, you need to take care of yourself. You may need to be protected more than anybody else. So, you know, if you're going to go to the store shopping, wear a mask. You know, don't touch your face, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, all that stuff. Protect yourself. But instead, you know, we punish the entire population. I think pretty much the entire population of the world, except maybe China, I bet they didn't lock down, or North Korea, I bet they didn't lock down. Um, but, you know, pretty much every other civilized country in the world, you know, had this tremendous lockdown to protect against, what I say, 1.8% of people who get infected die, and 8.7% of the population actually gets the infection. And just, like, by my calculation, only 0.16%, 0.16% of people who, uh, that's people who died of the COVID infection or supposedly died because of the COVID infection. So certainly it was a dramatic overreach by every single, you know, supposedly educated health services uh, department in the country. It, it, It stuns me that nobody actually used their head and figured this out to keep us from basically destroying the economy, you know, smashing. I don't know how many small businesses are done, never coming back. And by never, I mean they say they're not coming back. Um, it's kind of sad uh, and and just kind of unbelievable that everybody is so on board with the lockdown and even so even if they would have locked down for 30 days and kind of reassessed you know and said okay this is what it looks like let's start getting people back to work let's you know let people who are kind of young and healthy get back to work and and see what happens from there but gosh you know every single little blip on the radar caused like an overreach and and more lockdowns and more restrictions. And it was kind of interesting. I was looking at uh, the difference between um, California and I think Florida. Yeah. So I did, I kind of did a comparison between California and Florida. And it turns out that even though California had the most strict lockdowns and 
By most strict, I mean at one point you couldn't even leave your house at night and go for a walk. Not even alone, you weren't allowed to do that. And I don't know how it is now, if it's any different at all. But Florida didn't have the same kind of lockdowns. They've been open for a while. And basically, uh, the numbers are the same for both of those states. And by the numbers, I mean the rates of infection are the same for both, both of those states. And I actually want to mention right now that all of the things I talk about will be in the blog post with links. So you can go check it out yourself. I think most of the things that I talk about, I try and list the original source. So if somebody quotes that somebody, some study was done, you'll find the study in there. You'll be able to find the link and go look look for it yourself. Read it and uh, analyze it yourself and figure out if you come to the same uh, conclusion that I do. But anyway... Uh, so the COVID lockdown, but definitely an overreach, and uh, I'm glad people are finally waking up, even though it's it's embarrassing and kind of unfortunate it's not happening here in the United States, at least not yet, not in mass. Uh, at least it's happened in some places, so you can bet it's going to come here. I'm just surprised that we've put up with it for so long, and I really don't understand why I'm sure at some point... I may have a better idea, but uh, right now it just uh, it just uh, has me baffled. So something else that happened yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw this story, but another thing that came through Real Liberty Media was these two teens that burned a mentally ill man to death. Now, I haven't seen that on the news, and I can barely stomach watching the news, uh, so I... I'll tell you, this is how I watch the news. I watch my local news to see kind of what's going on in the area and to get the weather report because it's a little more accurate, especially a couple of the guys that I, the, the weather team I like to listen to. They're pretty dang good at, you know, telling you what's going to happen, although it really doesn't make that much difference to me because, uh, I don't do anything that important. It depends on the weather. You know, they used to really depend on some kind of a weather outlook before they planted their crops or tilled their fields or fertilized or harvested or whatever. But anymore, um, I think there's so much, there's so many new services available at the, you know, touch of a button on your cell phone or computer or whatever that you can you know, you can get that information pretty handily. But anyway, so I like to watch the local news just for that kind of stuff. And um, um, I didn't see a story about these two teens that burned the mentally ill man to death. But you would, you would think that uh, this would have been a good story, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, so they say in the mainstream media, the the newsrooms, I guess, but uh, not this story. And um, I won't get in the details. I'll leave it up to you to figure it out. But uh, but I, I could imagine, I can say this, if the race of these individuals was reversed, oh my God, you would never hear the end of this story. You would hear about how much of a hate crime it was, how racist the two teens were, and, you know, you on and on and on, it would never stop. This would go on for weeks. We wouldn't hear the end of this, well, until the next thing came along that could replace it and fit the woke media. And by the way, my new opinion of woke is like one step above being in a drug-induced coma. That's what I think woke is. Um and I'm hoping that most of the people listening here or that follow Real Liberty Media are far beyond woke. They are eyes wide open kind of people. Uh, I really, I'm really looking forward to the growth here on Real Liberty Media. Uh, great shows, great people. Uh, it's just a great place to hang out, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be, you know, doing a little show here myself. Hopefully, you guys find it interesting. After this show. Today, 
I am going to be grilling a burger and I think I'm going to make it a blue cheese bacon burger. But but I, for one, love to grill. And we grill year-round. Like, of course, we're in Oregon. We don't have, you know, ridiculous winters here. And even if we did, I think I'd still probably find a way to grill outside. I have this little area kind of right behind me in the home studio um, that's uh, kind of a little cut out. I don't know what the real term for this is, but it's kind of, it's kind of like the house was built around it. And so it's covered, you know, the roof actually extends over it, but it's outside. It's actually outside, but it's, you know, it's covered. So I'm never wet. I'm never really freezing. And the grill smoke usually goes, you know, out. Uh, it usually doesn't blow into that area. It usually blows out. So it's pretty good area to just grill in. Um, so I'll, anyway, so we basically grill year round and we probably grill a few times a week because I like to grill that much and I like grilled food that much. And I've been kind of dying for a blue cheese bacon burger. And today's the day I am, like I said before, you know, some people, because of some things I talk about may seem sort of healthy. I'm still pretty much a normal guy and a meat and potatoes kind of guy. So you know, you know, we're going to be having uh, grilled burgers and French fries after this, and I'm really looking forward to that. And um, having uh, maybe a little brewski with it sounds good today, because uh, you know I got some more NCAA tournament to catch up with and see what's going on in that, and watch the end of the NASCAR race. And you know, I still really enjoy having a good time so and i really hope everybody does man life is too short you never know what's going to happen i had issues lately you know what i'm kind of a healthy guy i don't know i'm you know i i work out every day i ride 30 to 40 minutes on a stationary bike i try and stay in shape but dang it man age just <laughs> it just oh gosh for those of you who are you know beyond 50 and maybe beyond 60 or whatever you know man every day is you every day could be something new and um <laughs> i've had issues lately it's been kind of funny kind of funny i mean it kind of sucks but it's kind of funny let me get a drink here sorry hmm. anyway so that's what's on the agenda this afternoon having a little delicious meal grilled burgers i'm looking forward to it so i wanted to kind of hit on something i've actually been wanting to talk about this for a really long time not really but since my show started so i guess this is maybe episode three so probably at least a few weeks i've been kind of looking at some things from china that i wanted to get to and i might have mentioned them kind of briefly before but with this week's um so this week, of course, you know, some idiot went and shot up, what, killed, I don't know, eight people. And everybody wanted to jump on the bandwagon that this was a hate crime. And it was racist and it was against Asians or Asian Americans or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, like I'm one of those people that I think there's a really good reason. And I bet some of you can agree with me. There's a time and a place to hate people, anybody. I have a person in my life that I absolutely hate. And if I had a chance, yes, I would take them out. No question about it. Never had the chance. I'm sure that person's probably gone now. But um, it was a personal experience with me and my family. And... Um, that person didn't deserve to live, that's for sure. So there's a good reason. Whether You know, there's a reason God gave us the emotions that he gave us. We're not supposed to have those emotions, I think, indiscriminately. But there's a reason why you have, like, say, for example, intuition. 
intuition will protect you far more often than people think. Like intuition can keep you out of trouble when there's no other reason for you to make a decision that you're going to make other than you have some inkling in your mind that something isn't right. So hate is another one of those emotions that you're allowed to have hate. I just hope that everybody places that hate in the right direction. You know, there's no reason to hate a race. Okay, let's say this. I'm going to speak personally. I don't have any reason to hate any other race. I just don't. I know when I was really young, my stepfather hated Japanese. Well, why did he hate Japanese? Because he was, you know, he was part of World War II and the end of World War II. Um, he lived during that era. So he... I guess, had a reason to, like, hate the Japanese. Okay, well, I get it. Um, I think war is different. I don't think you... I, I don't know how you come away from war without hating the opposite side. I, I don't know how you do that. I'm sure there's people a lot brighter than, than me that can tell you how to do that. But anyway, what I wanted to get to, and it kind of seemed a little bit more appropriate because, you know, this shooting, this young man, probably half crazy, obviously addicted to something. He went and killed up a bunch of people who I guess were Asian or most of them were Asian. I, I don't know, really. I didn't look at the story that closely because I just wanted to see how it fit in here. And, um, kind of go through some things that I've found about China, China, the Chinese Communist Party, and China. Not Asians specifically, not a race, but actually the people who are part of the Chinese Communist Party. Because there's a lot of stuff going on in China and a lot of reasons why people in the world should be alarmed. Not hate Chinese people, not hate Chinese Americans or people from China who are here, but be aware of what China is doing. And I'll leave it up to you to make the decision on what to do after that. But I'm going to start by reviewing, and I thought it was interesting that this study was done about Canadians, and I thought that's kind of cool because because uh, now I don't have to specifically address the United States and American interests and how I feel about it or, or how, you know, some study that was done on the United States. So this is a little bit removed. It's Canada. And I think there's some really interesting things here. And then I'm going to kind of point out why we should be aware and constantly keep an eye on the Chinese Communist Party. So this study was done. Um, I'm going to move my mic. Sorry, I bumped it. hope it didn't make a bunch of noise. Anyway, so this study was done, and of course there will be a link in the uh, blog post, that nearly four in five Canadians say they do not have a positive view of China. 47% uh, of Canadians have a very unfavorable view of China, while 30% hold a mostly unfavorable view. That's 77%. 14% said they the, they view the nation favor, favorably, and 30, uh, that's a 34-point drop compared to 2017. Um, The uh, Canadians also believe that the Chinese Communist Party offers uh, did not offer a fair and accurate account of what happened during the COVID-19 disease, the Chinese, uh, Chinese Communist Party virus causes outbreak. It says only 9% buy into Beijing's narrative. A vast majority of Canadians, 55%, strongly disagree, and 26% disagree. That's 81% that the Chinese regime has been transparent and honest about the pandemic. Yeah, well, duh. I'm not surprised by that whatsoever. But I'm glad that this is Canada and not the United States. I'm just saying. Um, 
Uh, the majority of Canadians also say Canada should develop closer trade ties with the United States, 49%, and the European Union, 49%, instead of China, 11%. They were also skeptical of allowing Chinese investment in the country's sensitive industries, such as telecommunications and finance, uh, three quarters expressing disapproval. Um, let's see. The uh, In a speech to the Center for International Governance Innovation on February 9th, David Vignault, Director of Canadian Security and Intelligence Service, said the Chinese, Co the Chinese Communist Party has been stealing critical technology, including from Canada, particularly in the sectors of biopharma, health, artificial intelligence, aerospace, ocean technology, and quantum computing. He says the com that Communist China is using all elements of state power to carry out activities that are a direct threat to our national security and sovereignty. This is Canada, okay? Uh, moreover, the Canadians believe that China cannot be trusted in regards to human rights or the rule of law, with 56% saying they strongly agree and 29% agree. Alongside that view is three-quarters of Canadians agree that Beijing's treatment of the Uyghurs, and I looked up the pronunciation of that name, but if you want to know how it's spelled, it's U-Y-G-H-U-R. Uyghurs, Muslims in China, should be called a genocide. Now, the Communist Chinese Party is kind of interesting in this. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what the Uyghurs believe, but I'm sure you can go find it because I found a whole Wikipedia page with uh, that related to the Weigers. But the bottom line is, um, wait, yeah. Uh, so on March 8th, independent think tank New New Lines Institute for Strategy and Policy, New Lines Institute for Strategy and Policy published a report detailing how the Chinese Communist Party systematically conducted the genocide by collecting the Weigers biometric data, assigning party cadre teams to monitor them, and subsequently destroying their culture and religious sight, language, and poetry, all central to their identity and life. Then the Chinese Communist Party criminalized their religious practices. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Um, uh, criminalized the religious practices, built and expanded the internment camps and detention facilities where about one to two million Weigers were detained. What follows, what followed, is forced labor, forced abortions, mass sterilization of Weiger women, widespread rape, sexual abuse, and forced separation of Weiger children from their parents. That's what the report presented. Um, there was also, and this was just in March, that a Chinese doctor committed suicide, says that he jumped off a building. Now, we all know that could have been an accident. Maybe was, maybe wasn't. But this editor who was uh, writing this opinion piece, and actually I think he talked to... Uh, he talked to somebody who was close to this doc. doc. Uh, his name is Doc. The, so the man who committed suicide was Dr. Zhang Yujin, a liver transplant specialist. Uh, it says his death may have been connected to his alleged involvement with the mass harvesting of organs from Falun Gong adherents. So here's another completely different um, religious. I guess, component there in China that apparently the Chi Communist Chinese Party doesn't like. But pretty much the same thing happens to them. They were, you know, they were isolated. They were put in prison. They, they're basically kept in prison. Um, they're taken advantage of the same as before with uh, uh, rape, sexual abuse, forced separation of children from their parents, uh, forced abortions, forced labor, mass sterilization. And basically, you know, if uh, the Chinese Communist Party needs an organ for something, obviously liver transplants, because this guy was like the liver transplant 
uh, champion. He was given awards for a few years in a row of being, you know, the best uh, liver transplant doc in at least uh, communist China. Um, they just go kill one of their uh, religious prisoners and harvest their organs. Or yes, maybe sometimes, I, I don't think you can live without a liver, duh. But maybe a kidney, I don't know if they would, you know, like take one kidney and <laughs> and let you live until they need the other one. Uh, I really don't know how it happens because, you, as you can imagine, there's probably not a whole lot of information coming out of communist China about this uh, this practice they have. But um, I wanted to see how many transplants this guy did. I'm not kidding. It was like an incredible number. Uh, yeah, of course I didn't highlight it because I could, so I could find it quickly. But Needless to say, oh, so here we go. Um, according to a report in MedSci, a medical platform in China, Zhang was a distinguished organ transplant expert who had done over 2,600 cases of liver transplants. He was among the top 10 Chinese doctors doing liver, liver organ transplants for four consecutive years, and in 2019, he was awarded the title the nation's distinguished doctor. Isn't that awesome? So, you know, he became really good at transplanting livers through uh, the Chinese Communist Party, just um, killing their prisoners and harvesting their organs. So, you know, what I'm trying to say here is we got to keep an eye on what's going on in the world because really after the last election, I don't know how many times I heard about how we needed internment camps to change people's, you know, Trump followers' thoughts and to quiet Christians, which is kind of crazy because we have freedom of religion, freedom from religion, freedom of religion also. Um, and it's kind of crazy that we have a large segment of the population who thinks it's okay to take that right away and to actually create internment camps. But here, I mean, just look at China. This is what they do. Put people in re-education camps, which are prisons. They take complete advantage of them. If you go look for some of this stuff yourself, I, I, you know, I'm kind of at the time in my life or at the age in my life where I've seen enough horror. Like, I, I, I really don't need to see any more horror. I think I've seen some of the worst possible behavior of human beings that you could imagine. And so if you go look for people who have survived some of this treatment, you can see they demonstrate how some of these things were done and they will tell you the stories about how they are treated in those prisons um feel free i guess uh i i saw enough that i knew i didn't need to see any more i want i had to go to some original sources for my own satisfaction i guess so i read a couple of reports of people who actually survived and for whatever reason they were allowed to leave or they were set free or whatever. Uh, I, I guess I, I can't imagine that they would need to slaughter all one or two million followers of Falun Gong, you know, because I don't know, maybe they don't need that many livers or kidneys or hearts or lungs or whatever. But apparently... You know, some of them were allowed to allowed to go. Um, so going on with Canada here, um, this are, uh, this report also said uh, that the vast majority of Canadians, seventy nine percent, want the country to prioritize human rights and rule of law over China's trade and invest, investment opportunities for Canada. That translates into over half of Canadians supporting the idea that Canada should boycott the 2022 Olympics. Yeah, I don't know about, I mean, 
I, I, I just think the whole Olympic thing, whether you boycott it or not, does it really make a big deal? Don't know. It is a statement to make, which I love that idea. I'd love to see more attention brought to this so people understand what's going on um, with China and, you know, hopefully educate ourselves enough on China so that we look at our elected officials and see if what they're doing is like the right thing to do. I mean, if we're having, um, if we're negoti negotiating business deals with China, don't you think we ought to look into some of these human rights abuses and the treatment of humans there in China and ask for some kind of demand, some kind of, uh, I guess, clear evidence that they're making a change and that they are uh, you know the funny thing is you hear time and time again yeah i mean just listen to the uh you know whenever there's an election pre-election or election time you hear over and over about human rights i pointed this out last week on my show the democrats who you know have said I mean, and everybody has said for I don't know how many years about women's rights, and I'm not going to, I am going to say this again. And then all of a sudden, here in Oregon, you know, we have these laws. Uh, I, I don't want to be confusing. So we talk about respecting women and how humiliating it is for women to be prostitutes and to be pimps and that they're slaves, on and on and on. And then we have Democrats in Oregon who are, who are trying to get laws passed that makes prostitution and pimping legal and I'm saying to myself how can you how can you blatantly be hypocritical like that I mean do you think that people don't don't see that connection anyway man I really didn't want to get that far off uh, subject so let me get back to it so the bottom line here is we have Asian Americans, we have government officials talking to the Asian Americans like, you know, here we're, you know, we want, um, you know, we want, we're, we're here for you. We stand with you, Asian Americans. And then like just across the sea, you have China, you know, participating in these horrendous human rights violations. You don't hear anything about that. I'll tell you something else you don't hear anything about. You don't hear anything about them standing up for the Asian Americans who are now being not allowed into some institutions of higher living because Asians perform so much better that, you know, they got to make room for other people who aren't quite as qualified as Asians because of, I guess, diversity or whatever you want to call it. Um, and by the way, I'm just going to say, I was thinking about this the last couple of days. There is absolutely no reason to go to college anymore. There is. There's a couple reasons. Here, here are the reasons to go to college. If you... <laughs> uh, I get wound up sometimes. Sorry about that. If you're so flippin' stupid that you don't understand um, the progressive agenda in the United States, then you should go to college. They will help you clearly understand it. If there's really no re, what are you going to learn in college and actually go make money at? I mean, you can learn to build a nuclear reactor, you know, on YouTube, but we we don't want any nuclear reactors in the world, so forget about that. We're not going to do that. And as a matter of fact, we don't even want to produce energy anymore unless it's you know the most inefficient green energy and then you know have to subsidize that with government whatever uh but you don't i don't you don't need to go to school to learn how to do that i mean hell they have uh you know they have installers all over the country now that'll come and put solar panels on your house and uh you know wind turbines aren't that hard to figure out uh i actually kind of had a plan to, to do a wind turbine myself pretty simple. I, I've never tried it, but I, I'll probably try it. If I do try it, I'll do a show on it. <laughs> but anyway, um, but my point is the hypocrisy drives me insane. 
not just the hypocrisy, but the point that the same people who support those politicians when they're running for office on, you know, some whatever agenda, let's say human rights agenda, why don't they hold their feet to the fire when it comes to something like this? Why don't they speak about the atrocities in China when they're talking about supporting Asian Americans here in this country? Why is it only that some hate crime was committed and we're against the hate crime? I mean, for Christ's sakes, look at China. Is that not a hate crime? Yes, it's a hate crime against, you know, religious belief. Two different religions that I know of in China that are being basically murdered for their organs. Whenever China has a match and needs an organ, they just go, you know, I guess they go just look at the DNA. They probably have all their prisoners' DNA on file and they just find the matching one close enough. And uh, guess what? Today's your day. Last meal. Well, probably you don't even get a, a last meal. I don't know. So something else that happened uh, in Canada, and he, I'm just pointing out all of the different things that we need to be aware of China for. And luckily, for whatever reason, it kind of tickles me that this stuff is coming out of Canada, mostly, so that it's one step removed. I'm just saying, look at what Canada is also looking at. So the Canadian, uh, Canadian, uh, can Canada had two citizens, Michael Spaver and Michael Corvig, uh, who were, oh, let me start over. Oh yeah. Likewise, the case of the Canadian citizen, citizens, Michael Spaver and Michael Corvig have put a strain on the Sino-Canadian relationship. Both were arbitrarily detained in China in December 2018, just days after Meng Wanzhou, um, I forget how to say the name of this company, it's, it's H-U-A-W-E-I, Huawei or Huawei, uh, CFO was arrested in Vancouver Airport at the request of the United States, where she is wanted on bank fraud charges related to alleged violations of U.S. sanctions against Iran. So those two Canadians were later charged with espionage and have remained in custody, held on what the federal government and international observers alike have described as bogus charges aimed at putting pressure on Canada. Meng, meanwhile, is under house arrest at one of her mansions in Vancouver as her case is heard in court. Anyway, so, so another thing, like, Another reason to keep an eye on China. And then the last, I think the last thing that I was going to cover is this drug chain <laughs> that, you know, we have a problem in this country with drug overdoses. I just completed my written part of my CPR course. I have to do it every two years as part of being a dentist, even a redneck dentist. Got to have your CPR certification up to date. And I noticed the new thing, like in this rotation, is opioid addiction. So it kind of is interesting that I pulled this story out a few weeks ago. Need a drink, hang on. Should have somebody here to play music or whistle or play an instrument or something while I'm having a drink. I guess I could always go to commercial. But... Nope, I'm still here. Okay, so here's the deal. We have this problem in the United States, at least, with with opi opioid addiction and overdose deaths. And it is kind of out of control. And like I've said before, I don't care what you do with your life. I, I seriously don't. You know, if you don't bother me and don't hurt others, do what you will. But... When I see, again, China is involved in the increase. Now, I'm not saying it's China's fault. I'm just saying they play a part in this. Everybody makes their own decision. If you OD on opioids, did somebody do that to you? In most cases, no, you did it to yourself. I don't recommend it. <laughs> 
I don't even like opioids, as a matter of fact. And I have a very strict regimen I use when I prescribe opioids or synthetic opioids. But I personally don't like them. But anyway, here's the bottom line. Another story about China. So Mexican cartels are manufacturing uh, the pills using precursor chemicals supplied by China, according to the DEA, of course, another government institution we all have to be questionable about. Chinese money laundering networks also provide the cartels with a way to clean their cash. The majority of heroin and fentanyl available in the United States is smuggled overland across the southern border, this report states. Fentanyl is also being ordered online and shipped directly from China through international mail and commercial parcel services. China-sourced fentanyl typically is smuggled in small volumes and generally tested over 90% pure, so I guess that's kind of a good thing. At least it's not junk. Um or also we could look at, uh, so that's just another way that China, it's just another thing that you need to look at China for and understand, you know, the things that China is doing. I mean, they're becoming a powerhouse in the world. I think, you know, they've stated that their goal is to be the next monetary capital of the world, basically. And, and you know, it's funny it's funny to look at history and to look at how many conflicts there's been throughout the world. And you wonder to yourself, like you think that we're living in a civilized time and that people are kind of done overthrowing other countries. It's not. It's never going to end. As long as there are human beings and greed involved, it is not going to end. There's always going to be a country looking to take another country's resources. And I believe that this is no different. I mean, why would you not want to be the country that has the most power in the world? Um, I Personally, I just would like to live my life in peace without so much government interference. But I mean, the governments are out there that want to, you know, they want to rule the world and that's their goal. And they all have agendas. They all have plans on how to do it. Um, we could also look at how China interfered with elections in the United States. Multiple attacks were done during the counting process. If you haven't looked at Mike Lindell's video, I encourage you to go watch it. Find it somewhere. It's on Rumble. I think you can still find it on Rumble. There's some places where you can still find these videos, even though they've been they've been cancel cultured out of YouTube and uh, Facebook, Twitter. Go listen to those forensic analysis, those those uh, IT forensic teams that can show you explicitly where China interfered with the elections and they can show you how votes changed within minutes, all coming from, you know, IP addresses that they can trace directly back to China. If you aren't convinced that China interfered with the, this election and probably will interfere with future elections. You need to go watch and just see what... Um, and, you know, the thing is, Mike Lindell, he, I mean, he's a smart guy. He's no freaking genius. He's a smart guy. He's a guy with his eyes wide open. But he's not a genius. He went and got people who are experts in their field who were watching the elections happen real time and collecting data and they can show where weaknesses vulnerable vulnerabilities were taken advantage of during our election cycle but let's be honest about who is who the americans living here are not worthy of hate based on their race look at china and the chinese communist party why are we as a country not doing more about them? I mean, this is probably, it wasn't even an hour. Oh, it was close. That's kind of surprising. But in less than an hour, I've detailed a number of items to look at that, you, that we should be asking are worthless elected officials 
what are why aren't we teamed up with Canada and other civilized countries that care about this stuff? Why are we not being stronger about getting to the heart of some of these problems and seeing that the the uh, communist Chinese change their change their practices? It's savage. It's brutal. It's it's inhumane to say the least. Um, you know, I guess in some ways you might say it's sort of genius. I mean, they have their own organ farm that they can pull organs from for whatever reason, whenever they want. But, um, you know, just I guess today was my rant on China. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up here in a few minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Please tune in to Real Liberty Media. I did want to tell you guys, uh, I'm always trying to think of one story about dentistry so that we don't forget I'm actually a dentist. Like, <laughs> Not that that's important, but I am the redneck dentist. I'm going to tell you the most uh, disgusting dental case I've ever had. So you don't have to listen to the rest of the show if you don't want. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, this was a long time ago. I bet this was in probably 2000, no, probably 99, 2000, somewhere around there. Um, so this patient of mine, uh, he was having pain on the upper right and he came in, you know, to have me look at him and boy, there was a terrible odor. I'll tell you this. Yeah, I know HIPAA laws. I'm not going to talk about names. I'm not going to throw anything like that out, but I am going to tell this story. So this guy had this, he had pain, and it was pretty bad, and uh, and his mouth stunk. I mean, from feet away, you could smell how bad his breath was and how something horrible was going on in there. So I asked him, uh, well, of course, we took an x-ray first. I didn't see anything real obvious on the x-ray, but I did see kind of a, like not really a mass, but let's just say kind of a blur on x-ray that I wanted to check out. So, you know, in going over the, kind of the uh, the presentation with this patient, I asked him how long it had been, how long it had been hurting, and he said about two years, you know, and I asked him what kind of pain he was having. He told me and blah, 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 and I said, okay, well, was there any specific uh, event that you can relate to the pain starting, you know, in this area? And he said, yeah. He said it was right after I had my tooth taken out. And I was like, oh, okay. So ever since then, and he says, yeah, two years ago. He says, ever since then, it's been painful. And he goes, but now, man, it's just getting worse and worse. Two years, everybody, just keep this in mind. So I reclined the patient, you know, of course, still had mask and gloves and gown, all that stuff on. Had him open his mouth, and I see in the upper right corner this mass that was black and purple and red and green and brown, and it reeked and I knew that whatever that was was bad so I kind of took an instrument to feel it to see if it was fluctuant that means you can kind of squish it a little bit kind of like fluid filled and when I touched it I realized it wasn't actually attached to him so I grabbed hold of it with uh, tweezers and I pulled out two two-by-two two gauze that was placed in his mouth two years ago <laughs> when he had his tooth extracted. And I guess nobody told him that he was supposed to take it out and he and what's amazing to me is somehow for two flipping years this guy ate meals drank stuff i can tell you he didn't brush his teeth 
But still, how do you eat meals for two years and not dislodge this gauze? I mean, not some, I mean, even swallow it in your sleep or something. Anyway, it was the absolute worst case that I've ever worked on. And you can imagine after, I don't know, 20 years in the Bureau of Prisons and, um, uh, you know, I don't know how many more years now, 15 more years in the private practice of public health dentistry sort of setting. I've seen some pretty gross things, but that was by far the, wor by far the worst. Hey, I hope you all enjoy the show. Please tune in to Real Liberty Media. Listen to some of the other shows. They're all great. I appreciate you guys watching here. I mean, listening here. And uh, thanks for your support. We'll see you next week. Redneck Dentist here on Real Liberty Media. Would you like to be entertained, enlightened, and or educated? Tune in to Real Liberty Media and catch live shows or listen to podcasts from diverse shows such as Behind the Woodshed with Hal Anthony, Evolutionarily Engaging Counter-Propaganda Tactics and Related Works, or you could listen to It's All Connected with Grim Near and Circle. They show you how all things are connected. Free your mind with Grimner and Moose Girl. See your way beyond the world as it has been defined. Sunday Blues with Grimner. Grimner plays all kinds of blues from great oldies to modern hard rocking blues. Join us in the chat room for fun times and a trivia contest. It's a lot of fun and has great conversation. A Ponder Gander with Vin E. To think and reason, raising expectations through provoking episodes. If you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. You can join us for the Top 10 Countdown with Gary L. and Gigi's Boo. They play the Top 10 songs from years past and provide some interesting historical facts and trivia about songs and the era. Take your pick. They are all great shows and you will have an opportunity to chat with other listeners and hosts of the shows. Come on over to join Real Liberty Media. See you there.